Hello, everyone. In today's case, we are going to extract an upper lateral, place an immediate implant, bone graft, and immediate non-functional provisionalization in under 10 minutes. So why don't we go ahead and roll the tape, starting now. What we have here is a failing tooth number seven in the lateral position. The patient's been anesthetized. We use a, a 15 to come in and do an intersulcular incision. We don't elevate the tissue at all. I'm going to apply rotational forces with my forceps. Rotational forces into single rooted teeth and the crown separates first, which is what you would expect from a, a failing tooth. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down right into the sulcus, right where we had made that initial incision. And we're just going to try to grab onto that little bit of tooth structure that's left with rotational forces. And the rotational forces will protect the thin buccal plate. And out comes the root tip. So we've got the failing tooth out in just a couple of moments. I'm going to irrigate. And then we're going to follow up with our serrated curette from Hugh Freedy. If you don't have one of these serrated curettes, buy yourself one for Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever religion you support. And you will be very happy because this thing can get out granulation tissue like it's supposed to. So I want to make sure we really scratch the lamina dura of the extraction socket because when you take a tooth out that simply, if you don't get bleeding, you're not getting the first step to healing. So all the infection is verified that it's gone, copious irrigation, and we are also assessing the buccal wall, making sure the buccal wall is intact, and in this case it is. Now the surgical guide does not fit, and the reason it doesn't fit is we're placing a lateral. Laterals are the smallest tooth in the upper maxilla, and therefore the master cylinder is engaging right there the teeth on either side, the interproximal teeth. So all I do is I take it to the back table, and I adjust it with a diamond burr, make it a little thinner, and then it seats just fine. We have to do that routinely because the master cylinders have, have a tendency to engage teeth either on the mesial or distal. Now we're using the Biorizon's key system, and I've been using this for almost a decade now, and, and I've grown very comfortable with it, but it's got all the drills are the same length. All we're doing is stepping through increasing diameter. Very fast drills. Pick up the implant. Pick up the driver. There's no snap link on this driver, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but I, I know where the snap, where the depth stops are because I've been doing it for a while. I don't recommend that for new, new uh, surgeons. Go ahead and put the snap link on there so you know your depth stop. All right, implants placed in just under three minutes. Now what we need to do is place the healing cap that comes inside of the plastic container that the implant comes in. So it, it's complimentary, it comes with the kit. We're just gonna put it inside the implant very lightly to, to block the inside of the implant because now we're gonna gap graft for some mineral loss, which is cortical concellus chips. In this particular case, we're using the curved pocket packer from Salvin and each end of this has a different curve. It's a little condenser that is flat, like a spatula almost, that allows you to get into the little grooves around your implant between that and the bone. We don't need a lot because the lateral is small and there's not a lot of room to work with, so very little bone grafting necessary here. So at this point, what we need to do is take a little bit of the bone that's on top of my healing cap off so I can see the access hole for the 050 driver. And then once I do that, I come in and retrieve the healing cap because we're going to immediately provisionalize this with our S-wing solution. Now, when you're doing these cases, the, the implant just went in, so you wanna make sure you have only axial forces on your driver, this 050 driver. Make sure you're not bending it off axis. So very light pressure and axial forces only because you could, you could avulse your implant that you just placed, especially in a more compromised location. All right, here comes our S-wings. So it's our provisional, non-hexed or non-engaging. It goes in the hole and this is prefabricated. So we didn't make it time off clearly. 
and the wings are designed to create a counter rotation. So as I tighten the screw, the wings hold it in position. So it seats in position, but it also creates a, a, a counter torque so I can get a good amount of preload on my abutment screw during the healing phase. So it went right in. It's looking pretty good. The size of the edge looks a little wonky. We'll fix that in a minute. And this is what it looks like from the occlusion. Now you know why we call it the S-Wings. And make sure if you're going to do this, make sure your wings are on the right direction because they need to be designed so that when you put a clockwise torque on your screw, it creates a counterclockwise ro anti-rotation force. Because if you put your S-Wings on the wrong way, it doesn't help. To know more about the S-Wings, we actually published a paper, and it's on my website on the Stanley Institute website, and it's free to download. So if you want to give that to your lab and say, hey, I want to try this, uh, how to do it is on the is on the website. So now what you do is you just come in with your favorite burr. I like the big fat burr, and I just I just remove those bra those little wings. And one of the tricks is you never want to put your wings into the embrasures uh, unless you want to spend like a lot of time doing your modifications afterwards. But put it right smack dab in the center of the tooth, and that way it's really easy to to uh, clean it up, polish it, and make it look aesthetic. So that was the facial one is already off and we'll remove the lingual one. So at this point, we're about six minutes into the, into the case. And tooth's been removed, implant's been placed, bone graft's been placed, provisional's been placed, and now I start futzing. So depending on your disposition, you can futz for a long time. And if you've got time, I mean, if you've placed the implant in four minutes, you've got some time probably, so you can have some fun here and kind of make this look as good as you want. I don't put a whole lot of effort into it um, because it's a provisional. And um, as long as it's kind of holding the space, it's doing its job. So I, I typically don't work too hard at this. So let's try to fix that incisal size ledge and immediately it starts to look a little better, right? Notice how very little bleeding we have in the surgical field, and it's only been a few minutes. Now, this is one of my favorite tools, the soft flex discs. I really have a lot of control, uh, basically artistic control, over how my provisionals look when I use these soft flex discs. discs. It's always a good idea to, when using discs, to, to have an object in to protect the lips, keep them out of the way, keeps the patient from wanting to inadvertently ask you a question while you're working with a high-speed rotary instrument. Now, we're not, this is a show tooth. This is what we tell our patients. It's a show tooth. It's not to be used. It's just to show your friends. So it's non-functional. So we're checking to make sure that it has no contact. And then we're going to come in with our shim stock. And I was training a, a, an assistant from a local school. She was coming in. So she actually gave me two pieces of PTFE, which is, that's a no-no. We don't like to do that. We only, when it's time to take them out, you only want to take one piece out. You don't want to go in there and take out like three or four little pieces. So I, 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 taught, her, I taught her about that there. And then um, in addition to that, When I was placing, when I was doing my initial incision, I did it with a 15 blade, and we typically like to use the Perio micro blades. So anytime a team member doesn't hold up their end of the bargain or their their job, it's it's my responsibility. So I take 100% ownership. It's it's training and communication on my part. It's not a failure on theirs. And this being a a, a student who just graduated from assisting school, who was just shadowing and help, we we're just you know helping her learn with a little bit of experience, that's 100% on, on me. So a little bit of the yellow PTFE went in the hole, and then some composite. Now remember, the, the sole purpose, well, the two main purposes, socket sealing, so the provisional is sealing in the graft around the area, but more importantly for me, We've coined the term maintain, not regain. Maintain, not regain. And what I mean by that is I want to maintain all the hard and soft tissue architecture around my site so I don't have to grow it later. 
And that's what we're doing here. So this is the second thing. She didn't have the, the shim stock holder. And so I asked her, can you go grab that? And when she was running off to grab it, of course, I did what all dentists do. It's, I just improvised with my hemostats. It makes assistants feel really good when they come back in the room and you're done with the task that you asked them to run out and take care of. All right, a little bit of polishing on the composite that I had just filled in the access hole. And now I'm definitely futzing. You know, I'm coming in here to make the inside smooth. Oh, come on. What are we doing? We're coming. Now we're coming in with a cup. I actually really like the cups. I, I find that they're, um, they're small enough to get into the places. And because of the cup design, I feel like I can really get a good, a good polish. All right. So on the left before and on the right, about 15 minutes later when we took the final photo. So th remember, maintain, not regain. That's our, that's our objective with these cases, especially in the aesthetic zone. I would never do this in the posterior. Behind, behind the smile zone, I'm not doing this. I uh, mean, provisionalization on a, on a molar. It's, it's only in the aesthetic zone. So, guys, if you want to learn more about this, go to Stanley Institute, and you can learn how this method works. And if it sounds good to you, reach out to us. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, the smile engineer, helping you re-engineer your practice every day.